Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, welcome back to another World Betrayed DLC preview, and today we have the King of the Black Mountains, Zhang Yan. Now, Zhang Yan returns as one of the original Bandit factions, and he's also getting reworked with the Bandit rework. Uh, so some things are going to be a little bit different about his faction. Uh, some of his original uh, faction playstyle might alter a little bit, but he's still focused on the same uh, ambush uh, type playstyle, which makes him quite hard to play on Legendary Difficulty because on legendary difficulty on ambush mode uh, your range units do not auto fire they don't automatically acquire targets so you have to kind of manually babysit them uh, during the entire fight which is pretty hard when you have a full stack um, without pausing which is not enabled on legendary difficulty uh, but regardless he's still the same character we know him as before he's a champion and he has the background bonus of enable, ignore forest penalties, and 25% post-battle loot income. Uh, which is going to be quite nice because post-battle loot uh, is going to be one of the uh, playstyle focuses for bandits. Uh, faction specialization, the opportunist alignment, uh, can improve relationship with yellow turbans. Now this part is pretty much useless. Simply because... Uh, in the 194 start, there's not that many yellow turban forces on the map. And you can ambush when attacking. That's really the big draw of Zhang Yan. And a lot of players who enjoy playing him uh, like the fact that you can trigger ambush battles when you're on offense. Uh, and this gives you, you know, unique uh, deployment options and playstyles that would otherwise be on uh, not available for any other faction. Uh, his unique features are uh, the Black Mountain Marauders, available rank 1. The Black Mountain Outlaws available at rank 3 and the Black Mountain Hunters available at rank 5. Now these are, um, you know, bandits units, the dual axe, spear, axe, and bow. Um, they're all quite good. Uh, they cause scare, which is a big plus, especially with the now uh, lowered morale as they lowered all the morale boost from generals. So everyone's morale is going to be lower and causing scare is going to help you route units a little bit faster. Uh, the gorilla deployment's nice for those non-ambush battles you trigger because uh, on ambush battles you pretty much have the whole map to deploy anyways. Uh, your faction unique building is still the Black Mountain Hideout. You can only build this in Yemen, so you can only build this in your original capital. Uh, try not to lose your original capital because if someone else convert it and destroy it, you can't rebuild this, which is a big issue for many players. Uh, there are three chains of this building branch. And these individual branches uh, do different things. Uh, first branch improves your relationship with the high Empire factions. And it will increase um, administrator limit and public order. Now this is still probably the best branch uh, for you. Uh, especially now there's more Han Empire factions. Uh, it's pretty much every non-Yellow uh, Turban faction is considered a high Empire faction. Uh, I guess Bandits would not be considered, but everyone else is high Empire faction. Uh, administrator limits have always been good. Uh, there's been a little change to this now that the new administrators for bandits are called underlings. And they offer a little bit different bonus, uh, but it's quite it's similar enough. Instead of just offering like a flat 30% corruption reduction, you get 20% and you cause 10% corruption in all local, uh, neighboring enemy command. So it kind of like debuffs the... Uh, nearby enemies, but if you have all allies, then you kind of lose out because everyone instead of getting 30%, you get 20%. Uh, you also have mercenary treaties. All the bandits have this, and we will have this. Uh, it's very, very nice. I find this one of the best additions to the game. Basically, you enter into a direct alliance with someone for 20 turns, temporary alliance, and you gain points and rewards for helping them fight a common enemy. Uh, so it's a great way to get uh, some extra income and a diplomatic relationship by directly helping someone fight. Uh, noteworthy characters, uh, Wang Dong is the only one left. Uh, you had more in the 190 start. You had people like Yu Du and Li Da Mu. Uh, these guys are gone because of the cleansing effort that Lu Bu did while working for Yuan Shao. Many of your lieutenants have been killed. Uh, historically, it was recorded that Lu Bu and Yuan Shao's men would ride into the Black Mountains, come back with, you know, thousands of heads, and uh, you basically struggled holding your Black Mountain against Yuan Shao. But eventually, uh, Lü Bu and Yuan Shao's relationship broke, 
and Lu Bu had to run away to Zhangyang, and you kind of got a reprieve, and you survived. And now all you have to deal with is Yuan Shao's cousin, uh, Gao Gan over here. So much easier than Lu Bu from before. Um, we're going to be showcasing this on Legendary Legendary 40 Minutes, so let's get started. Xiao 那我便先除掉他再重新积攒实力我便能卷土重来，让袁绍为激怒黑山贼而后悔万分。Alrighty, so the mountain thunder, the black mountains are your home, Zhang Yan, but change is coming to China, and with it opportunity. You and your bandits have long worked both with and against the Han, but now you must work solely for yourselves. Use your network and your own power to see your ambitions realized. Look to Gong Sun Zan for support. Survive the onslaught of Yuan Shao and his vassals. Okay, so things are gonna look ugly in the beginning. And we have to start out by beating this army. Taste of victory. Um, this is like a joke for Han factions because you get 30 military supplies per turn and five morale. But for bandit factions, you get 30 loot per turn for three turns, so it's actually really rewarding here. Um, a few things uh, that's a little bit different here is uh, if you look at the building options we have, uh, this is obviously an industry commander here in Taiyuan, and uh, it's a great commandery. And the new changes to the military forge should play very nicely uh, in this commandery. Uh, so definitely you start out with a pretty good part of the map. Uh, you do start out enemies with, uh, let's see, Yuan Shao and his vassals, Golgat. So something you could do is, you know, basically take a look at the enemy you're about to fight. You can see who else he's at war with. So Tian Kai and Zhang Yan. So maybe we can offer uh, to Tian Kai a mercenary contract if that's possible with merc uh, with vassals. Yeah, since he's a vassal, we can't offer this to him. So that steal is gone. Uh, but we can maybe offer one to Gong Sun Zan to help him fight uh, Yuan Shao, who we're fighting with anyways. Now, obviously, we won't get any points for destroying Gao Gan's army, but eventually we'll be going out to conquer uh, Yuan Shao's territory. So uh, perhaps this is not a bad deal either. Uh, we can see how much he wants us to fight Yuan Shao. So 11.1, uh, that's quite high. So maybe we can grab our territory back, the lumber yard from Yemen. Okay, so this is definitely doable. Uh, we have minus two food, which really bad. Hmm. I guess we can trace some items as well. Ooh, art of war. Okay. Okay, basically enables basically the three formations. Uh, we can give him this, and he can give us some money back too. Oh, he's poor. Okay, then never mind. Then we're gonna just give him this, and call it a deal. Right. This way, we get a nice, rewarding mercenary contract as long as we don't let it go to zero in twenty turns, which we shouldn't because we will be doing battle with Ranshaw's men, and uh, we get a territory back. All right, basically requires us to beat an army. We get another thousand gold. Uh, it decays four turns. We have ten turns to do something, 
And then as long as we do something, I'm sure we'll get points back. Let's put on these items. Since he is our leader, uh, taking this would help our authority. Long dunk. Uh, mastermind, what bonus do we have? Oh, it's just a spying bonus? Okay, terrible. Um... Okay, increased chance of ambush does play well into our faction. Who else do we have? Oh man. Uh, I think this is Zhang Yan's wife. Uh, we do start out with a wife in this start. Um, is she? She is not next in command. Uh, or next in line, I, something the, the heir is, has a different name here, uh, but it's fine. She can be a good administrator. Oh, we have a son. He's eleven. <laughs> okay, I mean historically, yeah, Zhang Fang. So historically, we do have kids, and uh, they they do have a place to, to play in history. So even though we are the bandits, right? Uh, what will happen is, um, as we talked about in Gong Sun Zan's uh, preview, uh, when Yuan Shao is attacking him, his son comes to us asking for help. We sent over 100,000 men. Uh, Zhang Yan had control of a population over about a million people. Uh, no joke. So, strong force. That's why Yuan Shao and the likes couldn't overthrow us. We weren't just a group of small bandits. We controlled this whole region. And uh, we basically skirmished from with Yuan Shao all the way till Cao Cao destroys Yuan Shao. And during that process, we become friendly with Cao Cao because we have a shared common enemy. And eventually we bring the entire Black Mountain forces to join Cao Cao. And Cao Cao give us a title. And our son will eventually take over that title and we'll just stay in this region, help uh, Cao Cao monitor the North as one of his subordinates. So that's the fate of Zhang Yet. Someone who turned from a yellow turban follower into a bandit into a uh, way official under Cao Cao's rule and uh, continuing to prosper. Real winner from uh, if you think about the yellow turbans, the person who you know came out the whole thing uh, at the end with a lordship. You know, it's pretty impressive. Uh, but we do start out with almost nobody. Uh, we are reeling from the tax that Cao Cao has placed on our men and might as well give him instinct and give her yeah we could make her our next in line uh, for a while because we do get this 25 bonus if we do and she doesn't have anything that's bad uh, matter of fact she has plus three public order um considering the fact that our son won't come of age for seven more years it's okay he's a commander he'll definitely get his job back don't worry and if we look at the skill trees, did they do anything to our skill tree? Target is strike. I don't remember Zhang skill tree that well. Okay, mending is definitely new. So maybe they did change our skill tree. Yeah, I think this is like the, the bandit version of um, hamstring. But instead of minus speed, you minus morale. Yeah, but mending is really, really good. You can also use it on yourself. So... Um, you get extra armor, extra melee evasion, and you heal. It's very nice. Stalker, okay, this is also a bandit skill. Okay, everything else is pretty similar. Tenastia Steel. Oh, she has a very normal skill tree. Oh, our wife is not a bandit. Our wife is a normal... Wait, she is a bandit. She's an agent. But she doesn't have any bandit skills. Which is nice, because you know if you have bandit skills, you don't have scholarship and intuition. So she makes an excellent administrator after she leaves her duty as uh, next in line. Ah, uh, maybe we could have. Hmm. Well, he's not bad either. So as you can see, the bonuses are ten percent income from all sources instead of fifteen for Han administrators. And you get minus 20% corruption instead of minus 30. And you get plus 10 corruption in adjacent enemy commanders. So that's different. Um, but we are going to put him here. 
this is really going to be the focus of our development. Okay, so we assign everyone. Uh, we're going to showcase this fight here. It's not going to be a terribly easy fight. Because they do have a lot of good units. Uh, but we'll we'll see how this goes. And we trigger ambush on offense. Uh, there's a chance for that, but we we get it, which is nice. Um, yeah, these I usually want to delegate, but here we'll showcase how how terrible it is to fight an ambush battle. Hopefully, I don't lose it. Uh, let's start. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up in here. So with ambush battles, uh, they're trying to run to a point. They're kind of marching down, and we catch them off guard. And the way we want to set up here is to trick their cavalry into running into these spearmen. And we're going to put our archers right behind. Now typically if they could auto acquire a target and just keep shooting, I would have no problem with ambush battles, but they can't do that. So we pretty much have to babysit them. We're going to keep these guys on the side. They will come in and flank. Uh, we'll just basically put everyone on one side. Now imagine us having a whole stack, right? And then we have to ma micromanage at least six different range units and uh, get everyone to work correctly without pausing. It's pretty much impossible. Uh, that's why I don't play Zhang yet, pretty much. Let's start. See, see the archers? They don't fire. You have to tell them to fire. And then when you tell them to fire, um, I think with stock or stalker, uh, they won't know where the fire is coming from. Technically, you have a uh, snipe, which enable you to remain hidden while shooting. But somehow the AI knows. Uh, but they'll be charging into our uh, hidden spear units. So we're going to wipe out the cavalry first. Oh, and they slow down. Smart. Don't run out. I don't know why they do that. Right. Alright, they do suicide. Great. Alright, now is to flank with these guys. They don't want to duel, which is really annoying. No, 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 do not go after those guys. Alright, Zhang Yang will take care of that. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, they have axe units which are really good against against our spear units with shield. But if they can listen and stack together, we can actually fight them by shooting arrows into them. Or else Zhang Yang will just have to do it. Okay, I guess they're just routing. Sure. There goes all our troops. There goes our strategists. Yeah, ambush fights, I don't know. I just don't feel like we have advantage in ambush fight. Alright, we can heal ourselves. We just have to wait till Johnny finishes the fight and fight the rest. Hopefully his morale can... He's unbreakable. Oh yeah, that's his armor. No, fatigue immunity. How is he unbreakable? We have stubborn as a trait? Hmm. Well, it's good. Because the rest of the army, I can't really say. Need you to win. Alright, they're back. Good job. They're also back. Shoot. Let's go. Oh, this is easy. What are you guys bracing for? Oh, okay. Bracing for that charge. 
We do cause scare, I believe. Yep. We're also fatigue immune and also unbreakable. Johnny's pretty amazing. So yeah, at the end of the day, we just had to solo this fight, but yeah. It would have been a lot better if the archers just kept acquiring their own targets. We could build some range distance and then trap their cavalry. Uh, yeah, we'll let him have fun, rack up the kills. Did the other guy leave already? I think the other guy... Wait, we didn't get the win. The other guy must be hiding somewhere. Where's the other enemy unit? Go find them. Hmm. Ah, ah, there they are, there they are. Doesn't want to duel, okay. We'll just whack you. Cloud scare. We'll do mending on ourselves. We'll mend ourselves, give us extra armor, and I think melee evasion as well. And a heal. This skill is really good. And we win! With 61 men left on the field. All right, pretty ugly victory. Um, it's probably going to be the theme. So I don't recommend playing Zhang Yang on Legendary. Uh, play him on very hard. You know, get a pause button on the ambush fights, and it could be actually really enjoyable. Um, here, I just want some extra loot, I believe. Because we lost loot for casualty. Okay, want us to reach Bandit Leader. Forge your alliance with Gong Sun Zan. It's very doable if we fulfill our mercenary uh, contract. So, we probably want to get rid of the units. That's my opinion here. Um, didn't want to do that. Now let's first take a look at how our bandit network works. We have one, two, three, four unlocked. Minus 5% recruitment cost for range units, minus 10% upkeep for range units, attack rate for range units, great. Shock cavalry. So we have access to Xiongnu cavalry from the start. Two of them. One archer. Two black mountain outlaws. Okay, upkeep for spear. Plus five replenishment is really good. And horseback huntsman. Okay. Let's see which way do we want to go. So these give us chanters. Oh no, heralds. Unbreakable units. Okay, not bad. Simbei horse archers. So the stronger version of horse archers. I don't know if they're actually stronger. They have more armor and they're slower, which might not be what we want on our horse archers. Very, very low charge. Like, compare them to the standard horse archers. Uh, horse bats huntsmen. I guess they're not the standard. These are the, like the little turban ones, I believe. You get less ammo, but almost 20 extra speed. Charge is still terrible. White Wave Veterans. Yeah, so this is the White Wave Valley, this area right here. So that's why they're called the White Wave Veterans, also former Yellow Turbans. White Wave Horsemen, see? White Wave Valley. Um, Alright, so I think if we go Cavalry Heavy, especially with Xiongnu Cavalry and White, uh, White Wave Cavalry, it be pretty good. And we can get these Senbei ri Riders. Okay, so I guess we go this this route first. I don't know if I want that one first. So usually I would be a sucker for all range damage, but with the nerf and also the fact that ambush battles really, really suck for, for range units. And are really, really good for cavalry because you get short 
charge out of nowhere. So I think we're going to go this route. It'll only take us four turns. And uh, let's see. We're in enemy territory. We could just chase them down. Force the reinforcement out of Taiyuan. And then take over Taiyuan. Hmm. So if it's an ambush, the reinforcement can't come. It's interesting. Uh, we'll just delegate this. Um, replenishment here? Oh, we can't reach now. Hmm. Alright, we'll, we'll go up higher in loot. And then we'll go take them down. And then once we capture this as ours, we'll share the loot to heal our units back. I think that's the plan. Alright, how do we want to build this? Okay, so we'll do this. Um, I don't like the labor here. I think state workshop's better. By controlling this, we get discount to sword and shield. We get prestige, banditry income, deployables in this county. Uh, yeah, so if we own the whole commandery, Right, so this is good because then it builds population and public order and loot. Redeployment costs. Well, that's actually really good too. That might be what we want actually. Because this army needs to be replenished afterward. And Taiwan, Toolmaker is still the same commander as Taiwan. Okay, so let's go capture that next turn. We are losing food, so we're losing reserve. Basically, this is built wrong. That's our famous Black Mountain Lair. Uh, it's Let's check it out. It's still the same as the first build we had on it. Yeah, this... Yeah, it's the same thing. This one's useless now, right? Because there's just not enough yellow turban factions around for this to be relevant. Um, this one is probably most bandit-like. Uh, three extra armies, uh, plus 25% income from looting settlements, plus 25% post-battle income. But this is probably the strongest one. Right? You get two extra administrators, which is always good. Uh, even though your version's nerfed. Okay, we're going to get rid of this. And we're definitely going to farm here. That's our food. And then we will convert this when we get a chance. Uh, so all these counties give discounts to a certain type of unit, right? 9% faction-wide upkeep costs for a spear unit. So I think once you expand, all your units get really, really cheap. Because these stack, right? So you have multiple lumber yards, you have multiple 9% discounts to spear units. Hmm. Pretty neat. Okay, you get food at level 2. So converting this is also an option. Alright, let's build that. <laughs> let's build that first, though. Um, I think that's everything. I think we can just continue. Alrighty. Um, we have already become a bandit. Cool. Another tr oh, we didn't do trade routes, but was anyone willing to trade with us? That's another question. Uh, someone was. Hmm. Three hundred gold. We'll think about it. Oh, nice horse. Alright, let's take this. 
We're just going delegate. That's basically going to be using Zhang Yan to kill everyone with Mind. Okay. We'll occupy. That actually pushes us right to 100, but that's fine. Alright, let's convert it. What does Toolmaker give us? 9% recruitment cost stacking to all units. Wow. And food. And that also solves the question that these only can occur once. Oh no, actually that's not true, maybe. Because you don't actually unlock additional building slot unless you have the right version. So maybe we'll see another one. That would be really, really nice. Yeah, I still haven't solved that mystery yet. Alright. We are going to waste some uh, loot. And plus I want to recruit our men. Um... We do have a bit of gold. So I kind of want to go a more cavalry build, even though we are a champion. Because I just don't feel like there's good enough spear units. Right, these are so expensive for what they are. Bandit warriors. Okay. Yeah, so what we're going to do is just get rid of these. And we'll go with a couple of these. Hmm. Technically, we want tribuchets. Especially if we want to attack um, enemy settlements. Yeah, but we're a little bit poor. I might not want anything on him for a little bit. I'm gonna recall him to heal up. And they can share the spoils, boost income, also increase replenishment. Uh, do we want... A couple more. We can afford two more. Let's do that. Okay. Alright, we got things building everywhere. Now we just gotta run this army over here to attack them. Um, I don't think Golgon's very aggressive. I think Yuan Shao is the one that's gonna be aggressive. Now, given our experience with Yuan Shao with Gong Sun Zan and Kong Rong, he sends full stacks, multiple full stacks after you. So I don't know how we're going to survive this. Um, especially we don't have any more people to recruit. We have all these slots, but we have no one to put them in. Um, so yeah, it's going to be tough. Let's uh, continue here. All right, Ren Shao commands their vassal in time to join a war. Sure. So far, so good. Uh, so we do get additional one. So each county can get a little one as long as you switch them to the bandit version. So that's a good news. Um, these are obviously great buildings. Um, Alright, so you can stack banditry income if you want to go that route. But here we're going industry income. And we're, you know, going to manage this command very fully. So maybe a food tent here. Hmm, tribute hall. So we don't have the tax building, so we don't have a free building. Which is pretty much what drives most of my economy. And there's no government support because that doesn't make sense. Hmm. So maybe we just want to build a forge. Or this. This might be good. And just focus on banditry income. But first we're going to save some money and just convert that and get a little building on the side. Alright, we don't, we can move. Yeah, I want to attack that.
I'm gonna recruit him back. We don't need siege weapons for that fight, just because livestock farms don't have any um, defensive structures. Yeah, but we need more can. We need more people. All right, that's good. Let's continue. All right, I was wrong. Uh, Galgan's being super annoying. He's marched right back with a very sad army. We finally have characters. All right, this is where all our income's going. We're gonna hire maybe two of these. So this is a uh, eventual strategist. He's actually a bandit. We might take him just for um, melee cavalry. I don't think Yang Feng will spy on us. Uh, Zhang Chao, the flowing flaw. <laughs> I mean, if we recruit him, we can make him next in line and get that bonus right away. Uh, the good thing is, next in line doesn't have to be relatives. Hmm, I like a few of them. So I like him in particular. Melee charge bonus, interesting. Campaign movement range, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna assume he's not a spy. And just recruit him. Alright, we have to turn around, which sucks, but plus 10 loot in enemy territory, minus 15 loot enemy armies in local commandery. Okay, I don't I don't know if that punishes us. Do we drop loot or do they drop loot? Where's the poison arrow one? Uh, it's over here. Okay, I don't really need that. I do need flaming shots, so I guess we're gonna go this way. Alright, I guess we're marching back. Um, just to face off with them. He's angry at us. Well, we can make you... Hmm. Although he doesn't have any traits, this is a much cheaper way to keep him happy. Yeah, let's let's put him here as uh, Yemen's for now, and then we're just gonna put him on assignment for a little bit. Why can't we? Wait, why can't I do this? He is not deployed. Maybe next turn? Okay, we'll, we'll wait a turn. Do we want anyone else? Hmm, maybe not now. Let's continue. All right, Kogan backed off, which is super annoying too, because now he's going he's going to keep us here for a little bit, and we need to get our mercenary contract up. So here we're getting rewarded. We can get an item, we can get money, we can get both, and lose more fame and fortune. If we lose more, we just have to run over, right? We still have a chance for a reward. That's why we got this. But if we drop here, we get no chance for reward. Um, let's take a gamble. Let's get both. And let's run over there. Alright. Chengong. 
后尘 ，OK。Hmm. What's the garrison here like? Oh, that's fine. That's a pretty big garrison. Uh, march, run, 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 run. Well, he's just not available. Because I mean, does doesn't make sense because he's administrator. Well, I guess Cheng. We'll find out on Cheng Gong. Okay, he works. There we go. Uh, we need to be a small city for that. We don't have gold. Uh, we don't have any actual industry income buildings. We do have private workshop, which also requires a small city. So we basically just save money for this. Hmm. This will double our garrison there. Same thing here. Let's do this first. I think we want the replenishment boost early on. Let's do this. All right. Um, let's give the horses out. She leveled up. Yeah, I'm gonna give her administrative skills and then switch her over to administrator later. It's a brown horse, so we can take that. The armor can go. No one can take the armor. Yeah, we don't have a, another champion or vanguard. All right, that's fine. Let's uh, pick a new reform. We got our reform done, so we got two additional cavalry units. We can get two more here. Two more Xiongnu cavalry here. If we go up. And 15% campaign movement range. And 5 morale for shock cavalry. That sounds pretty good. Minus 10% construction costs. Yeah, we're going to go up here and go for that. Okay, we got to run. <laughs> Let's continue. All right, division the capital. Book of change. Wow. It's a very good ambush item. All right, that goes on cooldown. We'll figure that out. The Xiu. All right, we'll pass. They should really implement a recruitment system like post-battle recruiting people to join you as bandits, similar to what they do with yellow turbans. Because I feel like the roster of available people who can be bandits are rather small. Yeah, maybe we just want this. Or we just want to save money. <laughs> Alright, we'll get there soon. It's not very strong. We'll win that. We have full loot, which is actually slowing us down. Hmm. But we're marching to make up for it, so it'd be okay. Let's just continue. All right, our mercenary contract is dying. Run. <laughs> Crushing defeat despite superior force because they think we'll just run the cavalry directly into the spear units. We will not. Uh, let's fight this. Alrighty, so we're jumped here in battle. Uh, we're not going to run the cavalry into the spear units. We're going to run Zhang Yan into the spear units, and then the cavalry will follow behind. 
Wait, are they not visible because they have some cool... No, they're not. Just because they're far. Okay, I was like, do they have any cool stock type ability where it makes them impossible to see? Alright, first we're going to use Johnny to wipe out the archers. And then the cavalry will show up. Yeah, protect your archers. Do your best. Do your best. Do your best. Nope, your archers are my... Yeah, watch out not to run into the spears. Not yet. There we go. Now we wipe them out. And then now we show up. There we go. Let them run. Okay. So, what we do here is... Let's say this guy right here... We just run into him. We make sure they're not braced. Heal himself for armor and melee evasion. Then we just crush them because we know they're not bracing. And then we just pull out, get another charge, let Jonghyun sit in the middle. And then we charge another group who is not bracing. And we win! Is that easy? Alright, we lost what? One, two, three, four, four men. Alrighty. So we take the livestock farm, and what we're gonna do is gift it. Gift it to our mercenary lord, and get money, get loot, get replenishment, fame, and fortune. And also let him deal with the wrath of Yuan Shao. There we go. Extra 1,000 gold for completing that part of the mercenary contract. And then we recovered a bit. Now we can go take the farmland and then return to take Golgat. This army is fine. We double the garrison. He shouldn't be able to take it. Okay, we finally can get March. Yeah, uh, uh, reach, not March, but March farther. So yeah, that's kind of the strategy you want to go. You want to be able to uh, remain pretty flexible. Uh, share the wealth a little bit. We got enough loot. You kind of just want to raid around. Uh, give some land to Gongsun Zang. And eventually work your way into alliance with him, which is part of your mission. And uh, hold the mountain area. And Yang Shuo is going to, Yang Feng is going to have an event. And it's going to clear him away from this area. Take over Xihe. Take over uh, He Dong and destroy Kolgat and slowly uh, weaken Yuan Shao and maybe you know you have a chance at that point uh, your army comp in the beginning is going to be a struggle you don't have enough characters you don't have enough money but you do have a pretty good commandery so I think you can build your way focus on the counties first uh, they become really strong like if you look at the, the garrison composition right you get really strong garrisons you get really good uh, recruitment cost discount uh, banditry income uh, here, obviously, you want to focus a little bit more on um, industry. And, uh, yeah, slowly build up. You'll be fine. Uh, keep Gongsun Zan strong and alive. He's doing pretty well. Oh, well, maybe not. We'll see. Yuan Shao sometimes crushes Koron first, sometimes crushes Gongsun Zan first. Hopefully, he doesn't crush you first. Because if he sends multiple full stacks, you're just going to have to play hide-and-go-seek with him in the mountains. Uh, because you're not really going to stop him. But yeah, that's how you play Bandits of the Black Mountains. Uh, we have Ma Tung left. And uh, DLC releases tomorrow. Can't wait. See you guys then. Bye.